Hey everyone, this is John from MotionWorks.net, back with a short Cinema 4D tutorial for you. I had a little bit of time between jobs the other day, and I was playing around with some chiseled text looks, and I came up with this particular look, which is nice and clean. You can see it's all nicely subdivided, all quads. And it's actually pretty easy to do, so let me walk you through how I created it. So here's my text. Okay, so I'll start with the L. I won't do all of the letters, but I think uh, you'll get the general idea once we've done a few. Now I'm using HB modeling tools here. You can see I've got all these icons in my workspace. So if you haven't got HB modeling tools and you're doing any kind of modeling, I definitely recommend you take a look at those. You can still do exactly what I'm doing using the standard tools in Cinema 4D, but the modeling tools just make it a little faster to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is get the Polygon Pen Tool. So that's ME on the keyboard. I'm just going to change my draw mode to points. And I'm going to turn on Vertex Snap. And just draw out an L shape. Just snapping to the vertices on that L. Just being sure to close that. Okay, now I'll do the E. Okay, there's the E. I'll just leave the S for the moment. Just draw my first polygon here. I'll hold down the control key and just drag out another one. Now, I want to make sure that I'm snapping to splines. Draw it out, then snap. And this is going to be fairly rough because I'm going to subdivide this, then I'm going to adjust it under subdivision. Because we want to follow that S exactly. Make sure we get a, an exact representation of that. Just get the main ones in place and I can come back and make some adjustments. Once again, snapping is really valuable here. Okay, so that's the basic shape. Now what I want to do is I want to just drop that into a subdivision surface. Just holding down the Alt or Option key. And you can see that rounds that out. <clears throat> so now with it selected, just grab the Move tool. Now I can pull that out. I might just turn off snapping for now. Zoom in. And now I can shape that. I'll push and pull that around to get that exact shape. I should have enough polygons in there to be able to represent this exactly. I'm not going to do the C, but the C, the approach for the C will be exactly the same as the S. Okay, I'll just turn that subdivision off by hitting the Q key, just to toggle that off. Okay, so next I'm going to polygon mode. I'm pressing 3 on the keyboard. I have my points at a keyboard shortcut of 1, 2 for edges, and 3 for polygons. And that saves me a lot of time. So I select everything. MW for inner extrude. I'm going to inner extrude that to about there. That's fine. With my marquee selection, I'm going to select them, press MQ for the weld tool, and I'm just going to click because that's going to weld them into the middle. Spacebar, select, spacebar, weld. Sorry, there's a dog barking in the background. Neighbor's got a new dog. This one will be a little bit different. ME. Hold down the control key and just dissolve that one. Then click and just add a new cut using the polygon pen tool. 
spacebar to drop that marquee selection mq click you can actually get really quite fast at this obviously i can also weld using the polygon pen tool but it's faster this way to use the weld tool because i can weld to the middle point holding down the alt key and middle mouse button to move around i use a three button mouse couldn't imagine doing anything in 3d with a pen me get rid of that one and that one gonna have to straighten this one out as well It's not liking the cut, so I'll just do KK. See if we get a better result there. That works better. Oop, I needed to just undo a bit there. Uh, to there. I often find myself undoing when I'm modeling. MQ. Okay, that's better. Now maybe if I add my cut like that, then with ME, polygon pen tool, I can just snap that in and weld that to that one. That's better. Okay. This one I just have to straighten up. I'm just going to front mode here. If I want to get that perfectly straight, there's a couple of ways I could do it. I could actually snap to a guide, but I find just grab the knife tool and create a new cut. And then just snap those into place. And that's done. That's the fastest way that I know. Okay, so remembering that we have the S under subdivision, well, obviously everything's under subdivision at the moment. You don't necessarily have to subdivide anything that's not curved to get the result that we're looking for, but I'm going to subdivide it anyway. First thing I want to do is just go into edge mode and I want to pull out my chisels on my chiseled edges. Just select the right ones. And these ones. Just hold the shift key and snap that out. Okay, so that's all chiseled out now. Obviously the S looks wrong, but you can see, as I mentioned, the, um, the rest of the letters look pretty good. I could bevel those quite easily now and that'd be finished. But if you wanted to do any kind of deformation, obviously you need more detail. You need a much more detailed mesh to get this to deform. So that's why you want to subdivide it. So next what I want to do is probably grab the edges. And just control drag that out. Okay. If I press Q now to turn on the subdivision surface, you can see it's all looking a bit strange. Okay, so now in edge mode, I want to select some of these edges. So I'm going to use Fong Break Selection for that. This is the Fong Break Selection tool down here. I'm just going to grab this one here, HB. Make sure I'm in edge mode. Select all. Now I don't need absolutely all of the edges. I need to get rid of some of these on the S mostly. Let's see how this works. So Q, just to toggle back on the subdivision surface, hold down the period key and drag to the right with the left mouse button. Okay, so that sharpens everything up. So that's 100% weighted on those edges now. 
Let's see how that looks. Okay, so we messed it up there. Get rid of that one. That one, I'm sure you all saw that and said, John, deselect those. Q. Try that again, period key, drag. There we go, you can see how nicely that S has come out. Okay, looking good, so that's all weighted. So what I wanna do now is I want to collapse that down. Now I don't want to have that as a subdivision render setting of three. I only want one. So I'm just gonna bring that down just using the HB divider, just holding down the Alt key. Bring that down to one. Actually one's too much. Two's better. Otherwise I'm gonna to add too many polygons to it. I can always subdivide it again later. Just keep a version of that and hide it. Press the C key to collapse that down. So now we have polygons. Now we still have the, the waiting tag here. I'm just gonna get rid of that because that's now baked down into the geometry. You can see we have quads throughout the object or objects. And I still have all of my edges selected. So now what I can do is just use the bevel tool, MS. Now make sure that I have uniform mitering turned on and just click and drag and just miter those edges. This is really important because that's what's gonna pick up the light. Let's just do a preview there. There you go, we have these lovely rounded edges. And there we go, it's as simple as that. And as I mentioned, this is all quads and it's got a pretty even subdivision. You could probably add a few more subdivisions in some of these areas. If I just go to UB in edge mode, just select those. MM to edge cut. Actually not edge cut, that's the connect edges command. I think that's what it's called. MM. That's better. So now I could deform this. So maybe grab the, let's see, the bend. And everything looks nice and sharp. With no problems in the geo. Not getting any kind of artifacting. It's all looking good. I can also just drop this into another subdivision if I wanted to and it's still looking really good. And obviously I can animate the deformation. So we're obviously with the introduction of R20, there is volume modeling and you could smash out some quick chisel text with volume modeling. But just be mindful that you may not get as good a result when you wanna zoom in really close or if you wanna do any kind of deformation. So it really pays to learn how to do this kind of thing in the traditional way as well, depending on how much time you have and depending on what it is you want to achieve. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. This is John from motionworks.net. Have fun, be creative, and I'll see you in another tutorial.